Hey guys. So today we're going to be talking about bugs. I thought I would tell you about some different things you can do, some different little tips and tricks to avoiding getting pests on your house plants. Uh, before we get into it, I do just want to say that having pests on our plants is kind of something I feel we need to like come to terms with <laughs> if we're going to keep plants in our house. Like getting bugs on our plants, I personally feel is pretty inevitable. It's probably going to happen to everybody that keeps plants at some point. If you're someone watching this like, oh, I haven't ever had a pest on my house plant, I would if, if you truly have not, then congratulations. That's incredible. Teach us your ways. But I would go ahead and guess that maybe you haven't inspected your plants closely enough or had plants for very long because I do think it's something that will happen at some point. And of course, the more plants you introduce from various place, different places, like the higher your odds of getting pests on your plants are. So yeah. Yeah. Lastly, please leave a comment down below with one or two of your favorite pest prevention or I don't know, pest treatment tactics. I think it's really helpful to read through the comments and have perspective from like multiple various plant keepers in different environments. And then we can kind of see like what the most common prevention tactics are. Let's get into it. Okay, so method number one I personally really like to use is to mix pest management things, tinkies, things, products, into the soil I'll be potting my plants into like initially. So some products I personally like to mix into the soil are diatomaceous earth and mosquito bits. Um, there are other things as well. Those are just the two products I personally know the most about and have had success using. So yes, I like to mix diatomaceous earth and mosquito bits directly into my soil before potting a plant. You can do this if you mix your own soil, of course, or you can just mix it into pre-bagged soil and it'll help keep away a lot of the pests. That's a really easy thing we can do to avoid to like start off on a good foot. And um, something else people maybe don't know about mosquito bits is not only can you use it in like soil and stuff, if you have propagation vessels or your plants, like here's an example, this plant lives just in some water right now. I will pot it up at some point. I just don't have a large enough pot yet. Uh, where it is living in water right now, truthfully, you guys, I'll be honest, I'm not very good at emptying out my water propagation containers. I'll pour in a little bit of extra water to top it off, but I don't really empty out the old water. You can actually also pour mosquito bits into your water propagation vessels to help with anything that may arise like mosquitoes or what other larva lives in water. There's a whole list of them on the mosquito bits container, but I can't exactly remember which ones they are right now. Uh, but yeah, you can also do that. So there you go. Or sprinkle it onto the top of the plant, of course. Yeah, I just like to mix it in. Tip number two is to clean your plant leaves regularly. There are a lot of different ways and methods to clean our plant leaves. I have a video that recently went up. I will um, link it up here as well as down in the description box. If you'd like to watch that to see what four methods I personally use most often to help keep down pests and keep my plant leaves clean. And the biggest reason we wanna keep our plant leaves clean is it makes it easier to notice infestations for two reasons in my personal opinion. Reason number one being we're getting up close and personal to our plants as we're, you know, wiping them down. Um, so then we can actually see what's going on a bit closer and notice things we maybe wouldn't notice if we were just like glancing at them in passing, you know, it gives us time to really get up close and personal with each plant. And then not only that, of course, it cleans off like dust and whatever debris is on our leaves, resulting in a healthier plant. If we have a thick layer of dust on our leaves, it makes it harder for the plant to photosynthesize. And unhealthy plants are actually more prone to pest outbreaks than a healthy plant. We wanna keep our plants as healthy as possible to help avoid pest outbreaks, primarily like spider mites like to live on dusty leaves, it seems like, dusty, dry leaves. So yeah, again, I'll have that video linked. Kind of on that same note, is to trim dying foliage, 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 what was I gonna say? Is to trim dying foliage or unhealthy foliage. And this comes down to personal preference, really. Me personally, a big reason I prefer to chop unhealthy foliage or dying foliage is one, there it leaves less space for pests to be hiding. So like if I chop off a couple leaves off a plant, that's a couple less leaves I need to like worry about when I'm, 
you know, inspecting my plants. Um, it's less space for pests to potentially be hiding in. Again, especially spider mites tend to gravitate toward unhealthy leaves. So getting rid of those leaves right away, it kind of helps prevent some of that. Maybe if you're somebody that doesn't struggle with pest outbreaks, like that's not necessary. It's really not necessarily, period. That's just something I like to do so that I have less less plant to worry about, you know? This next method, again, is kind of on those same lines as cleaning our plants and getting up and close and personal, but it is to inspect our plants regularly. So clean your plants regularly and inspect them regularly. So actually, I think it's really beneficial to go in with a flashlight when we're inspecting our plants. No matter how good of light our um, plants are in, there's sometimes little nooks and crannies like where the petiole meets the stem that are really hard to see into. Are super dark so if you have a flashlight it makes it so much easier to be able to like what's maneuver is the word maneuver to maneuver the light into different little crevices so you can see what's really going on so yes definitely inspect them regularly and well with a flashlight that's what I do anyway. The next method is to put yellow or blue sticky traps into your pots and yellow sticky traps are meant for fungus gnats more and blue sticky traps attract thrip. So just kind of depending on the type of outbreak you're having, you can scatter those sporadically throughout your house into your plants. I will link my favorite ones down below that I personally use. They do work really, really well. And um, yes, they are catching like the adult bugs that are flying through the air or whatever, crawling around on our plants. But if we're catching the adults, then those adults can no longer reproduce. So in theory, it should break up that life cycle and stop them. It should just dwindle the numbers and stop them from reproducing as quickly. So maybe you can go in with another measure to get rid of the bugs before they, before they, um, yeah, take over. This next tip doesn't work for all pests. The more like dusty leaf, dry, climate loving pests, particularly spider mites I've noticed, don't prefer to live on plants in a humid environment. They still can, but it just drops the likelihood that they're going to take over. So like my plants that live in my bathroom where the humidity is higher, I have a lot less issues with than my plants that live in like my bedroom where it's super dry and crispy in the air. <laughs> So definitely keep up the humidity if possible. Again, it's just kind of something small that can help, that can add up to make a big difference, especially if you're using like multiple of these, uh, it's going, they're going to make quite, quite the difference. These next two kind of go hand in hand as well. And it is to number one, let your plant soil dry between waterings. Um, especially if you're able to let the top few inches of soil dry between waterings, um, so via like bottom watering, that's actually a big, big reason I like to bottom water. I'm able to pull the plant out of the water before the top like inch or so of soil is dampened. Fungus gnats actually don't like to live in dry soil. So if you're not letting that top uh, layer of soil get wet, then they're not going to go into your plant. So bottom watering is a great way to help prevent that. Uh, that is one benefit I feel like people don't talk about enough when they're like dissing on the bottom watering thing. If you're somebody that doesn't like to bottom water, you can also put sand, like a, li a little layer of sand over the top of your soil. It doesn't like absorb water the way soil does. So the bug buggies aren't going to crawl through that to your soil. I just don't like the look of the sand on plants personally, so I do prefer to bottom water. But there are kind of two, that was kind of a two fur, two in one little tip. Tip number nine is to space your plants out. And you can obviously see I personally don't follow this rule, especially in my grow tent. Upstairs, I do follow it a little bit more, but if your plants are clustered together and one plant ends up with a pest, say you're somebody who buys a new plant and you're also somebody who doesn't isolate new plants like me. I don't do that. I don't have the patience for that. Um, I'll usually just treat the plant and put them right in with my collection. But uh, if you're just a little bit carefree, don't treat the soil or treat the plant, um, inspect it really thoroughly for pests, and you put your plant into a cluster, plants that are touching one another, 
pest outbreaks are going to spread a lot more quickly. So if you're able to leave them a little bit more spaced out, it gives you a little bit more time to catch it before those bugs spread to other plants, you know? So if you can keep them a little bit spaced out, I know like, especially as plant collectors, we end up with a ton of plants and it's hard to keep them spaced out so that they're not touching. But that's just one really, really like, pretty simple thing we can do to help give ourselves a little bit more time to potentially stop an outbreak before it happens, you know? And then the last thing you can do, even outside of like cleaning your leaves, is to spray your plants down with a water and peppermint oil spray. Peppermint oil actually repels pests. They don't like the way it smells. So if you can spray your plants down with that every once in a while, like don't go crazy and do it all the time and make sure you're diluting the peppermint oil. But if you can spray your plants down with that every once in a while, it can really, really help to keep bugs out. So yes, I will have the peppermint oil I personally use linked down in the description box, uh, but this is probably the easiest. In my opinion, this is this is the tip that is super easy, like super easy to do. I mean, you can walk by your plants, like not even look at them and just like give them a few sprays. You can spray the top of soil. Obviously don't spray it enough that it's like getting down into the roots a lot, but yeah, give them a good dousing, a good spray, and it's going to help prevent pests so much from even being attracted to your plants in the first place. It's a really, really great thing you can do preventatively. You can also spray your plants with neem oil uh, as a preventative, but that doesn't actually, that doesn't smell as good as peppermint oil does. Um, neem oil does actually break, does actually prevent them from um, reproducing or from absorbing nutrients so it breaks up their life cycle and they're not able to reproduce because they die too soon but if you don't like the smell of neem oil or I don't know using neem oil in your house then you can definitely do a peppermint oil. I think that's actually one of my favorite tips. I highly recommend trying it. Let me know if you've tried it and how it worked for you. Okay those are all of my tips. Um, I will say once I do end up with an outbreak the product I personally really really like to use to deal with them is Captain Jack's dead bug. I will link it down below. It's it's one of my one of my favorite pest prevention, pest killing products. It's what I personally use. If I do find a pest here or there, I really don't have pests that often. Every once in a while, I end up with like a thrip or a spider mite, but I'm able to get them under control pretty quickly. Stay pretty on top of it by using these tricks. But if I do, then Captain Jack's is what I use to, to get rid of the problem really quickly. So yeah, that is what I recommend. If you do end up finding a bug on your plants and you're like panicking really quick, go to my link, order that. Yeah, it, it'll solve the problem for you if you do it thoroughly and according to the instructions on the back of the bottle. Okay, so those are my 10 favorite pest prevention tips and tricks, things I do to help avoid pest outbreaks, and then also what I do if I end up with an outbreak. Captain Jack's, I'm telling you, Captain Jack's works very, very well. Don't forget to leave a comment with your best or favorite pest prevention, I can't talk, with your favorite pest prevention tactics to help help our planty friends out, have more overall information to choose from, from a lot of different people and different environments and planty care habits. Okay, I'm rambling. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. 